Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today on my channel we are going to be doing a wear test on the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. <laughs> talk a little bit about the product before we jump in. This is the packaging that it comes in. It is a glass bottle that is a pump. Um, it comes in 44 different shades. That's pretty amazing. That's a lot of shades. It is $44, which is interesting to me. It is one fluid ounce. And I do also want to read to you some of the description because it is very interesting that she has on the site. So it is a long lasting weightless hybrid skincare foundation with Charlotte's secret to a flawless, poreless looking confident complexion. Full coverage, matte finish, liquid formula for normal dry and combination types. The highlighted ingredients are Replexium, which helps to re reduce the appearance of wrinkles. Moss Cell Tech, number one, which helps to thoroughly hydrate the skin air cool which provides an immediate fresh feel on the skin and the ingredients to call out are the product is vegan and cruelty free but the key things they want you to know is the hybrid skincare foundation contains charlotte tilbury's magic matrix of ingredients including ground breaking magic replexium to reduce the appearance of wrinkles the hydrating lightweight formula is sweat proof humidity proof waterproof transfer resistant and for best results, start by applying the Magic Cream, which is sold separately, to prime the skin. And when it was tested on 30 men and women, 216% of them saw moisture levels were boosted in one hour. And when it was tested on 311 men and women over eight weeks, 97% agree the skin feels cool after use and 95% agreed that the pores looked reduced. When it was tested on 22 women, the skin had limited exposure to everyday pollutions. So with all of that said, I feel like that is a big ticket to check off all those little marks. So let's try it out and wear it and see how it does throughout the day. Good morning oh let's start this by pulling my hair back getting it out of my face to do this start with my two must-haves before applying any foundation any products in my face I always 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 do these two products so today we are going to be testing out the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush foundation Hollywood airbrush I'll tell you the exact name in just a minute and the number my main focus here is to help you guys find foundations that will work for you. Over 40 skin, combination skin, those are the two key things with me. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Air Airbrush Flawless Foundation, the Stay All Day and Night Foundation. I have it in the color Cool Freud. This is what the packaging looks like. It's kind of a frosted glass package. It does have a pump to it. We are going to jump right in. I'm putting a little bit of my under eye corrector on to help with those dark circles. I always do this before my foundation as well. All right, let's start in with this foundation. So we are going to give it two pumps. I am going to maybe Okay, pump's not working. That for this is not good. So we're going to, that's a crazy looking pump. We're gonna put some on this. Oh boy, this is gonna be a mess. That is already a reason why this is going to have to be at least exchanged if nothing else. So I put some on here. I am going to do half of my face with a brush on the right side and half of my face with the sponge. On the other side, let's start with the brush. Color's okay. I always, when I'm doing these reviews for you guys and wear tests for you guys, I always do the Sephora, if it's available, color match. That way you guys will know whether they're doing a decent job color matching or not through that. Nice finish, it's actually very pretty on. Might be a little bit yellow on me, but we'll see after I finish all of my makeup. I 
and make sure to go over my ears and under my chin. All right, so we have one. That is a good coverage foundation, guys. I am impressed with that coverage. The finish is very pretty. Um, I only used about half of that. We're going to use the sponge on the other half. Sometimes it goes on better with a sponge. Sometimes it goes on better with a brush. And that is something that throughout the day, the wear test is able to tell. Because sometimes the brush will get streaky and sometimes the brush will, uh, the sponge will get streaky. So it's always good to test it both ways to see which way is the best way to apply it. Um, I bounce back and forth as to how I apply things most times. So I am taking the sponge and kind of blending down. Now I will say with this foundation and the coverage that I feel as if this side with the sponge looks a little bit more natural looking. Um, the side over here looks a little bit more full coverage, a little bit heavier, but we will see how this plays out throughout the day. As always, I will do swatches at the end against my favorite foundations. I will show you this in daylight, etc. but let's go do the rest of my makeup and fast forward and then I'll come back and talk to you guys. thoughts is it goes on very very easily it does not feel heavy on the skin it has a very pretty kind of glow to it but not like an oil slick on my combination oily skin tone I don't want it to kind of get that look of oil breaking through I want it to have a nice healthy glow to it I will say that putting it on with the sponge right now I like this side's look a little bit more than this side um the color might be a slight bit too yellow for me. Nothing that would be noticeable just in every day unless I was out in bright sunlight. I will take this out in the sunlight and show it to you as well in natural lighting. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really liking how it applied and went on in the finish I have so far. So we will check back in at five hours, 10 hours, and we will show you swatches at the end as well. All right guys, so taking a moment to show it to you inside the house in non-direct sunlight. Um, but also it is in the house versus outside. So this is what it looks like on. I do really love the finish of this, which I am totally shocked by. I thought for sure when I saw this finish, I was going to be like, mm, no, that's totally not for me. So love the finish of this so far. I still prefer this side over the other. We're going to go take a look at it outside in daylight and see how that actually looks and how the color are out front. We are in the shade right now, halfway. I'm going to step into the sunlight and get, let you guys get a full look at this. But here's where we are at in the shaded area. And then let's step into the sunlight and take a look at it. Let you guys see what this looks like. And this is good for both me and for you because I can then, when I watch the playback, I can take a look at it in the direct sunlight and give you guys my final thoughts a little bit better on the coloring that way too. I wanna to take a moment and show this to you up a little bit close, or pretty close, right? In natural lighting. So you can see how it's doing. And what it looks like. So while we are in a natural sunlight area, I am going to photograph it. Take a look at it. So far, it looks pretty good in the photograph. It doesn't have a lot of flashback or anything. There wasn't a flash on. But we're going to go in the dark. I feel like in the daylight here a little bit. It is getting a little bit oxidized, but we'll see throughout the day. Okay, guys, so taking a look at this and taking a photo of it in a darker space. And let's see how it's flashing back. It has a little bit of flashback up through the forehead. 
A little bit of brightness. It probably was how I'm holding the camera more than anything else. A little bit low uh, darkness on the forehead, but overall it is not too bad. It has a little bit of shine on the chin too, but overall it's not a bad flashback at all. We are at the five hour check-in right now. I will say one key thing is I feel like it has oxidized on me a little bit. Definitely getting a little bit of an orange undertone to it, just slightly. Um, yeah, definitely getting that orange undertone to it. I can see it sitting right through here. I'll zoom in for you guys in a little bit. Yeah, definitely. It has, I've blown my nose a couple times. It has worn off in through my nose. It has not settled into fine lines or wrinkles, which is super important for those of us over 40. A um, little bit oily in through the forehead, but nothing that is out of the ordinary for my oily combination skin. I'm seeing my pores a little bit, but I have a feeling that that is more so because of the oxidation on it that I'm noticing it more because I'm nitpicking it a little bit. I'm going to zoom in and give you guys a better look. Taking a look at it. All right, the key areas, it is not settled into fine lines, but you can see right in through here, it is definitely getting a little bit of that yellow. You can see it through my hairline. That's where I always notice if it's oxidizing. You can also see how it's worn off slightly around the nose, but it has not settled at all, which that is very, very impressive. I might try it with a different powder to see how it does, see if it still does that. It might just be the color match is not exact. Yeah, it's not settling. This is where I tend to settle. Not settling in those areas at all. So let's take a really close look at it here for you guys. hour check-in and we are honestly pretty much looking the same as what we did before same area of breakdown nothing has changed here the cheeks are a little bit shiny but I don't mind my cheeks part being shiny it kind of looks like a highlighter um, it hasn't really broken down through here it's a little patchy but my skin always gets a little patchy in through there I will say, as I mentioned, the color is probably my biggest deterrent right now. It is just slightly off. Now, I will say with 44 colors, there is a good chance that there is a color that better matches me. I am going to look into that. However, I think at the 10 hour mark, it has held up tremendously well and I'm quite shocked by it. Before I get into my final thoughts on this product, let's take a look at those swatches against my top three favorites. Okay, looking at these swatches, I will say that it is closest to my ultimate match, which is this one here, which is the Lime Life Olive 02. And then this is the Estee Lauder in Pebble, which is 3C2. And then the uh, Dior Undercover Forever in 034. However, this one definitely, definitely, definitely has more yellow to it. So throughout the day, that is going to explain probably why this is going to oxidize on me because I have a much cooler base, as you can see through here. Because the pump doesn't work, it is already going back. So if I do like the actual way that this stays throughout the day, the finish, etc., I will go back and see if I can get a little bit closer of a color match, something that has a little bit more of that cool undertone to it. Final thoughts on this product. So I am actually pleasantly surprised by this product. When I saw this, I thought it was gonna be like her highlighters and some of those other things. I do have her powder and I carry it in my purse as a touch up. So I don't know why I thought this would be any different. It is a very, very nice product. It does have a lot of hype to live up to as far as everything she says in her description. I do think that it does not settle into fine lines, which is amazing when you are over 40. You do not want a foundation that settles into your fine lines when you are over 40. So something like that is really amazing. I think if you are oily skin type, this is not gonna work, but if you're a combination like me, you could totally, totally wear this and love it. Uh, you might have to powder throughout the day or blot, but I don't personally find that to be that big of a deal. This would be gorgeous on normal or dry skin types as well. It is a very, very pretty product. Uh, my pump still does not work. I've tried a bunch of things. 
scent wise it has a slight scent to it it's kind of a little bit medicinal kind of I can't put my finger on that scent it is an interesting scent um, but it wasn't anything that kept with me throughout the day and I didn't even notice it while I was applying so my thoughts on the wear overall is it does wear very nicely I love for over 40 if you can find the right color match in this how it wears the biggest part of this is how it does not settle into the fine lines the wrinkled areas anything like that that is probably my favorite thing about this foundation. This is an amazing foundation, as I said, for over 40. Now, how does it compare to my top three foundations that I always talk about? So let's take it in reference to the Dior Forever Undercover. I do like that foundation. Um, I would say it is the most similar to that one because it has great staying power. It has a slight bit of oxidation to it. Very, very, very minimal. Nothing that is a big deal. Um, but it is one that wears nice throughout the day that needs a little bit of blotting, but has the most natural finish of the ones that I would say I wear on a regular basis, my top three. Now, in reference to how it compares to Estee Lauder Double Wear, which is my all-time most full coverage, the coverage is very, very, very similar. I mean, both sides of the face, whether it's a brush or a sponge, lasted perfectly, had great coverage, both really, really good. So it is similar in coverage to that. However, the finish is different and the wear is different. Estee Lauder Double Wear is a very heavy feeling foundation that can also be drying on your skin. And as we age, how it dries down on your skin is just as important as how it covers your skin. So this one actually to me, although the color is not exactly perfect, and if you follow me on Instagram, I will touch base if I end up trying a different color in this one. Right now I think this is the best match, but I need to play around online and see. Uh, but right now this is a close contender for one of my top threes. And then my Lime Life foundation, which is my holy grail, I always go back to that foundation because it has a beautiful finish. You can apply it in so many different ways from high coverage to low coverage. It is a cream-based product and it just matches my skin coloring the best of anything I've ever tried. This is the closest to that. Again, however, the blurring properties in this and the way it does not settle into any fine lines actually gives it a step up on that. So overall, this one may be replacing one in my top three. It will just depend on whether I can find that exact color match a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. If not, it kind of leaves it at number four, to be honest with you. But I am so shocked and impressed that this foundation made it that high up in my list of favorites. And it has performed that well throughout the day. I thought I was gonna be an oil slick wearing this. So I'm very, very impressed with this and I really do like it. So that is quite a lot to say for a product that I read the description and thought there's no way it's living up to the hype of that. Either way, this one will be going back because the pump does not work. So I wanna make sure if I'm spending that money on a product, I want to make sure that that pump actually works. Another key thing, last time I've done this, is this lip that I put on has stayed on all day. This is the same lipstick as this morning. The only thing I did was add the gloss back on. So the lipstick that I put on, I will link all this below, is in Pink Taupe and Pink Nude is the lip gloss, both by the same brand. But the only thing I did was this once today and then adding gloss throughout the day when I felt like I needed it before I got on and showed this in the video. So that's everything for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this wear test. And if you have any additional questions, please let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching and sticking with me and have a great day. Bye.